Sean Parker along with Josh Apple. DMVStream.com had the privilege to stream all seven games of the National High School Hoops Festival at DeMatha High School on Saturday. And uh, Josh, we saw some exciting basketball on Saturday. And let's kick this thing right off. Let's start with Chavez and Laurel. The first game we had the pleasure of working this one together and it really was an exciting game. Two teams that are very perimeter oriented, guard heavy. Uh, I think Chavez didn't have a player on their team over 6'3", and I'm not sure Laurel had one over 6'4", but really exciting stuff here. You see Eno Eno, he knocked down some shots. He was hot. He was day. hot, yeah. I mean, it really ended up being the Khalif Tate for Chavez against Kurt Hawkins for Laurel show down the stretch. There you see Tate knocking down the deep three. He struggled a little bit in the first half, but the second half was all his, and Chavez pretty much won on his shoulders as they prevailed 67-60 in a really exciting up-tempo game. It really was an exciting game, and uh, that just kicked off the day for us. It was the second game that we had. Boy, that was some kind of ball game. We had West Charlotte and Riverdale Baptist. Tell us about that one. We also worked this one together That's and weird. how exciting it was. West Charlotte was down 22 points in the third quarter. One minute left in the third quarter, down 22 points, and they came back and somehow won 64-61. Uh, they were paced by Jalen Knight, their talented guard. They also had Kobe Williams, who made all kinds of shots. He was a great shooter. He was, he was hitting it from everywhere. Riverdale had a really good guard themselves, Jamal Wright. It ended up being the Wright versus Knight show. Uh, Riverdale had much more size, and they asserted themselves down low versus West Charlotte was all about their guards. But this was the final bucket that sealed the victory for West Charlotte after Riverdale had some key turnovers down the stretch that kind of gave the game away for them. All right, and now we move on to our, the third game of the day, Largo and Bowie, the uh, battle of Prince George's County teams, and uh, Largo prevailed on the tight one. It was another tight one. All, I mean, every game was tight, just about. Um, Largo prevailed 64-61. Isaiah Boggs, their star, had 10 points, so somewhat limited, but he did a good job of controlling the game. Here you see him uh, getting some assists. Greg Boyd was the story for Largo, as he had 18 points. He knocked down three threes in a row at one point in the second half to really separate them from Largo, um, from Bowie, rather. And Bowie, Quentin Drayden, their star, was held to only eight points. That was a major factor in the game, and both teams had trouble scoring. It was a free throw struggle. It was 69 free throws in that game, so a lot of fouling going on. Wow, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then we move on to the next game that we had. McNamara and Roosevelt, both teams. Uh, you know, it was kind of a home game for both teams, both teams uh, from the area, and, uh, it was a, and that was a good one. Another close game, just a five-point differential here as McNamara prevailed 63-58. Jameer Moultrie, the star for McNamara, had 21, and the star for Roosevelt also had 21, Najee Marshall. It was somewhat the Moultrie versus Marshall show there down the stretch. Uh, Ernest Jenkins, a key player for McNamara, also had 14 points. But the difference really was free throw shooting. McNamara goes 21 of 27, but Eleanor Roosevelt goes 15 for 28. And to lose by five and lose the free throw battle by that much, I mean, that's going to cost you the game. I mean, that's one of those fundamental things all coaches talk about is uh, hitting your free throws. Um, now, we had uh, four tight games, so of course it would only make sense that this fifth game, Episcopal and St. James, would go to overtime. Right, first overtime, only overtime game of the day, but they were all tight, as you mentioned. Episcopal escapes with a 56-53 victory over St. James. For Virginia Episcopal, they have some really talented players. Here you see Sasha Clea Jones, the Kentucky recruit, slam it at home. He had a lot of size and a lot of skill for a guy that's 6'11". They also had Justice Kithcart, who's going to Pittsburgh, and he hit a crucial bucket in overtime that sealed the win. St. James, their star of the day, was Grant Golden. But once he fouled out first play of overtime, it was pretty much over for St. James, and they kind of lost their momentum there. All right, and uh, two games that uh, Josh and I early in the day talked about were co-main events, and uh, certainly the first of the co-main events uh, lived up to its billing and uh, actually had a little bit of controversy there at the end, uh, API pulling out the victory over Paul VI. A little bit of controversy as API won by a single point, 70 to 69. The last play of the game was a tip-in buzzer beater, which you'll see in a little bit whether it was goaltending, whether it wasn't, but Terrence Ferguson, as you saw there, knocking down threes, really talented, the Alabama commit. This guy, Trayvon oh, Duvall, what unbelievable shot. skills, getting to the basket, he was so fun to watch. Paul the Six has their own star, B.J. King, who had 26 points, key contributions from Brandon Slater, who had 17. I mean, it was one of the best basketball games I've ever seen. 
But look at this play here. The tip in at the buzzer. Was it goaltending? Ooh, was it not? It was close. It was close. I actually think that it was the right call, that it wasn't goaltending. But either way, what a great game. What a great finish. Really dramatic there. All right. And then you had the final game of the evening. The home team, DeMatha, uh, taking on, uh, DeMatha being a, uh, being a private school, taking on a Prince George's County neighbor in Henry A. Wise. And DeMatha pulling out the victory there and what turned out to be uh, the widest margin of victory for the day. The widest margin of victory for the day, 13 points, the only double-digit win on the whole schedule of games for the day. So uh, DeMatha winning 66-53. Their star, Markel Foltz, as you see, just got the big dunk there, had 15 points. But it was Nate Darling, as you see, making this shot, who had 16. He, I mean, unbelievably can knock down threes from everywhere, especially in the second half. He took over the game just making threes. Here's another one, pump fake, and knocked it down. Uh, Deron Barnes had a good game for Wise, 23 points. Their other star, Michael Spate, had a good game, 13 points. And the game was really close in the first half. But in the second half, DeMatha just showed why they're ranked sixth in the nation, according to USA Today. Their stars were just too much to handle in the long run. And also DeMatha showing why they are also the center of basketball here in the DMV area. And DMVStream.com was the center of the action that day. For Josh, I'm Sean.